Hey everybody, welcome back to my Anime Ride channel, Giz Anime. Today we're going to be doing something a little different because we've got a hiatus on Song of Spider, so what? Nobody knows, or at least I don't think they do. When is coming back? So I'm going to do her power scaling video again. I want to put uh, a big disclaimer that I have not done exhaustive research on this. I have not read the manga, light novel, or really any other related materials. I'm like up to the anime, that's it. So basically everything is off of the little bit of research I'm going to be doing. This video is more or less just to help me fill in some of the gaps and maybe some other people who aren't as invested or have had the time to look into any of these abilities. Take everything that I say with a grain of salt. And with that said, let's get into this and see how far since our last discussion of her abilities, she's grown. All right, everybody, so let's start off with a little bit of general knowledge. Uh, our girl is a Azana Haroa. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong. Level 24, but still no name. Since the last power scaling video, she has gone from 902 health, it looks like, to 21,622, it appears. Um, and then we have... 4,000 health, or not health, mana points, roughly, up to almost 30k. We've jumped from 686 SP to 17,000, respectively, in both areas. And then we go into her basic stats. And as we can see with her basic stats, she now has 21,000 offense, 21,000 defense, uh... 28k magic power not to be confused with mana points obviously this is just how strong her magic is I would assume 28,000 resistance and 25,000 speed so she has grown quite a bit as we can see off of let's see if we can just see one of her previous stats we don't have to look at all of them her previous speed was 3,000. So, up to 25,000 now. So, she has grown eight times over now, roughly. Also, keep in mind, she is way stronger than this previous form. Uh, that was level 19 because of the evolutions. I'm pretty sure they kind of stack on each other. So, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to read each ability. And then we're going to give a brief description of it in a cut down version. Hit point, fast recovery. This seems pretty cut and dry. She's just able to recover health extremely quickly after being attacked. I would like to say that she's able to heal now after being attacked. Like let's say she loses a leg. Is she able to regenerate the leg or does she still have to level up to heal the leg? So I know if she gets cut, that could possibly be healed. But losing limbs, do those regenerate? I know due to her, her immortality skill, which we'll get into later, uh, she went from a head to a body, but that was after she killed things. So she still had to level up. And she was able to do that as just a head. So I'm not sure if she's able to restore her body. Maybe we'll find out through all this. All right, then we got height of occultism which is basically her ability to combine uh, mana point related abilities to their max and also to be able to essentially recover mana points faster and her magic abilities consume a bare minimum amount of magic that they would typically consume. So let's say she does an acid attack, a rod attack. And it used to consume 5,000 mana. Maybe it's down to 500 because of, and this is just me spitballing, not looking into anything. But let's say 5,000 to take out 10 people, but 500 to take out one. Now she can use that 500 to take out one to now take out the whole 10. This is essentially what I'm getting this is, but I could be way off too. 
like I said, just take the, everything I say for a grain of salt, people. And if anybody does come across this video and has uh, information to correct anything, feel free. Then we have Magic Divinity, level 7. A few moments later. Alright everybody, I can't figure out what Magic Divinity does, so... Just off the title alone, I would say it's some kind of magic that would... I assume be divine in nature, uh, angelic, celestial. Um, more or less like your light, dark counterpart. I'm not sure if it gives her any uh, celestial type abilities or magic like creation magic or like her rod attack is pretty destructive but I'm not sure if that would fall under the same category basically so moving forward magic power confirmment level 10 this is its max it uh, typically when she hits the max ability of any uh, ability it essentially evolves unless it has no evolution hence her ability to get wisdom Administrator D allowed her to evolve one of her skills. So magic power confirmance. Right? So this ability it seems like it allows her to transfer her magic into an object. If she were to transfer cold magic into an item, it would become cold. And re stay relatively cold. I would assume since it's at her max for quite a while, and she could probably make it pretty cold as well. She could probably essentially like put electricity into an item, theoretically like a battery and keep it running indefinitely. So we've got magic power super attack level two. More than likely just some kind of a magical attack she's able to dish out. Um, nothing special that I can tell. Um, probably the more basic kind of attack that she has just probably really strong compared to other creatures all right then we have sp ultra fast recovery level 10 and we're gonna go ahead and combine that with sp minimize consumption level 10 these again go in tandem with height of occultism uh height of occultism allows her to basically push these two abilities to their max again she uses a minimum amount of magic or magic points when using spells and when she does use magic she's able to recover them the the mana points incredibly quickly this also goes pretty well with her other abilities um she used to have one i'm not sure she has it now that she's immortal that basically said when she was down to one health she could use magic points to negate her death until they ran out uh, i'm not sure how that works in tandem with her immortality or if that uh, ability has since been uh removed we'll find out though at level 10 so then we go down to destruction super enhancement level six all right once again not a whole lot to run off of for this one um i would assume that this allows her to increase her Magic's destructive capability. None of the sites I've found have really anything to go off of. So if anybody has anything to add to this, again, feel free. Also, if you don't mind letting me know where you found the information, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Moving forward, Impact Super Enhancement Level 7. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure this one just has something to do with being able to increase the impact of an item or object uh notably in one episode she was throwing rocks i believe at enemies as well as projecting her poison attack so she's probably able to increase the the impact it has to increase the destructive capability these two in tandem probably would rock somebody's world if she were to take a pebble and increase its impact when throwing it and then increase its destruction 
capabilities, she could probably take out a tank with said pebble. Just with those two abilities together is my assumption once more from what I'm gathering that these things can do. Cutting super enhancement level four. So I'm pretty sure this has something to do with her legs are now in this new form, basically like skies. So she's probably able to cut through things relatively easily compared to probably other creatures of her same type. Uh, if y'all hear any noise in the background, by the way, I have a baby rabbit and a baby kitten and they are having a field day. But that's pretty much what I assume that these abilities do. Piercing super enhancement. Pretty sure that's level six. Going along with cutting, but not quite the same. She's probably able to go through armor rather easily. Um, heart, objects, surfaces, things of that nature. So she can pierce through the armor and then with cutting, follow through the attack. Some of these things are probably just basic knowledge type things. Shock, super enhancement, level six. She probably has some kind of electricity attack that she's able to use. Status, condition, super enhanced, level 10. I'm pretty sure that this probably has something to do with like, if any of you play uh, Final Fantasy or anything of that nature, like sleep, but she's able to put sleep into coma maybe and really go all out with it. Battle Divinity level 10, probably just really good at figuring out battle strategies. Uh, hence like body mind and then the magic mind, things of that nature. They probably work together pretty well to help her come up with strategies to beat opponents probably pretty quickly, I would say. Um, then we have energy conferment level 10. All right, this one's kind of interesting. So energy, I would think means like the ability to power something or to keep going. Like she can confer energy upon somebody to increase their ability to run faster or farther, kind of like an endurance thing. But that's actually not what this does. It increases the sturdiness of an object, um, like a shield. If she were to have a shield, she can make the shield, a wood shield, essentially turn into like a steel shield, like make it way stronger. She could do this to a door to make it to where a battering ram couldn't get through the thing. She's essentially able to create barriers on barriers, I would say, or to increase the durability of an object. And I'm not sure how far this goes either. All right, then we have ability confirmant level seven. All right, so this skill uh, essentially allows Kumiko to imbue an object with an ability so that other people can use it that don't have said ability. So like magic detection, if she can basically like imbue a rock with magic detection, give that rock to somebody, and then they're able to use that rock to detect magic on certain things. Um, whether this is a one-time use thing, I'm not sure, or if it just wears out over time or never wears out, because that would be pretty handy. Let's say in a D&D campaign, you're a thief. You have this little stone that lets you detect magic, magic traps. The, the possibility seems pretty uncanny, I would say. So this is a pretty unique ability, and I think it's pretty cool. All right, then we have energy super attack level four, probably like shock attack and things like that. Just an energy based attack that she's able to use. Divine dragon power level seven. All right, so this ability basically allows Kumiko to use the power of a dragon. She's also able to use it to negate magic, uh, basically like an EMP device, I would think, to negate her disable electronic devices she's able to use her power to disable uh, magic abilities all right and then we've got dragon barrier level two which essentially allows her to in tandem with the other disperse magic to allow magic to not even be able to be used she uses her, her dragon power level seven she uses that to disperse the magic and then she's able to use the dragon barrier level two to make it to where magic can't be used. Then we've got deadly poison attack level 10. This is pretty much one of her more basic attacks. Hence why it says it's a maxed ability. She's been using it quite a bit. She just uses 
of course, weak as fighter, poison magic, or attacks to take out her opponent. Super paralysis attack level six. All right, nothing that goes really in depth on this one either, so it's probably just cut and dry as it says. It paralyzes the opponent. Um, and since it's level six, it's not at its max ability, so this can probably get quite a bit stronger, but she essentially probably just immobilizes her opponents using it. All right, and the bread and butter of her attacks, as far as I'm concerned, Rod Attack, level six. Our girl has used this countless times to take out enemies. This is what she used, I'm pretty sure she's the Lady in Pink, spoiler alert, to take out Julius. as well as his whole squad and in the latest episode well the latest a uh, couple episodes back or so she used it I'm sure to destroy the barrier over the elf village She also uses this ability to beat several other stronger opponents and I feel like this is just like her main attack she uses because of its potency. Well, we know it comes at the cost of body parts. Um, she used it once some time back and uh, it took her eyes out but now that she has immortality the super increase like fast recovery I'm not sure if it really matters um, if she's able to just recover her body parts quicker um, because like in the elf village she used it to destroy the barrier nothing seemed like it happened to her so I'm pretty sure that the downsides of this ability have been negated through these other abilities she's gained here is the attack level 8 all right, nothing really to go off of this one, so I'm pretty sure this is just like the basic synopsis of all the other abilities that fall under this. Heresy attack just allows her to have the heresy abilities. So we'll get into those hopefully as they come up in the list, and if not, we'll go over them at the end of the video. Poison Synthesis Level 10. Her ability is to synthesize poisons together to make stronger, more potent poisons. Also, I think it has something to do with her ability to, to be resistant to poison, but I could be wrong about that one. Right, then we got Medicine Synthesis, level 10. Uh, her ability to create magic potions, healing potions, potions to negate poisons, probably curses, other effects in the system itself. Thread Genius, level 10. Probably her ability to create things. We've seen her create some pretty incredible things early in the season. So I'm pretty sure she can make even better things. Most namely the house she tried making with the sink that didn't really make water. Pretty sure it still can't make water because Thread can't create water. But uh, her ability to make it even more intricate looking is probably way better. And this also probably has something to do with her ability to use it in a combative type situation as well moving on we have divine thread weaving all right so divine thread weaving uh, actually allows her to create or to be able to utilize the threads in any capacity that she wants she's able to control its thickness its elasticity the viscosity of it uh, how sticky it is its strength and its ability to even cut through things um, or somebody's ability probably to cut it so she's able to manipulate it to a high degree thread control level 10 pretty much the same thing just allowing her to control every aspect of the thread and since it's level 10 to its strongest ability or point right then we've got telepathy level 7 this is what she probably used to talk to Gilly Gilly and like her body mind she's able to converse with them over long distances um, I haven't seen her use this ability to talk to anybody else 
but at level seven she's probably able to do this quite easily with probably pretty much anybody throw level 10 pretty cut and dry expel level 10 all right so this ability is something she uses to launch an, uh, an object so like if there's a boulder she can use it instead of having to pick it up she can use expel to launch it at her target probably regardless of how far away they are or the object dimensional maneuvering level 10 we've seen her use this quite a bit she's able to create these platforms that she can then jump on top of and create them anywhere to pretty much use them in a combative type nature or just to get anywhere she wants all right then we've got can control level 10 probably her ability to control other spiders just like the mother was able to do i haven't seen her use this ability yet either uh, i'm not sure if she uses these to control the nightmare vestiges that are left behind and the labyrinth by her or just by the power she had um we do know she's able to communicate with them in some ways because uh they talked to shun about her i think they basically told shun that she knows they're coming because of them you know i had to go back and watch that to see Uh, there was a lot going on at that moment, so it'd probably be best for me. All right next up on the list is the egg laying ability at level 10. I've had people tell me that the nightmare vestiges aren't her children, uh, that they're basically uh, beings that are created by her power that were left behind. I find that a little hard to believe. So at level 10 this means that she's used her egg laying ability. I'm sorry you don't max an ability by not using it. Um, unless this has something to do with the height of occultism, which does allow her abilities to be maxed, but I'm pretty sure that only has to do with like spell power, magic consumption, and things of that nature. I don't think it has anything to do with this, or else like this telepathy up here would be level 10 too. So I'm pretty sure that she's had kids. She's laid eggs. Those are her actual children that she's left behind. Hence why there's so many. Hence why this is so high up in level at its max. Uh, it would be interesting to see if this is able to break through to another ability. Concentration level 10. Um, more or less probably in tandem with like the body mind and things of that nature. Allowing her to just be able to use combative skills and things of that nature. To her utmost ability. Thought super acceleration level 3. She's just able to think really quickly in combat. She's able to analyze situations incredibly fast. She's also able to essentially slow down time to allow herself to be able to think of things. Uh, one of these things was like when Gilly Gilly was teleporting into her when they first met after she killed the dragon. She wasn't able to really do anything though. She was able to sense him coming. She was able to think of probably anything she could have thought of to do at the time and came to the conclusion there really wasn't anything she could do he, he was coming she was there future sight level 34 is that what that says i thought level 10 was the highest anything went uh, let me know if that's a typo people because that's pretty incredible future sight level 34 all right so a quick uh glance over some things and this Future Sight level 34 is supposed to be level 3 according to the novels and it basically allows her to see into the future we know but I also get the feeling that it allows her to predict outcomes um, based on the current situation she's able to basically think of every possible outcome and then adapt to it moving forward we have parallel minds level 9 uh, this is like the body mind the magic mind 1 and 2 um, her combative one, I think she has. Um, not sure what's happening with the body mind. Uh, it is currently inside of the Demon Lord Ariel. I'm not sure if it's going to ever transfer back to Kumiko or if that's going to stay in her because it's basically what's keeping her bloodlust against Kumiko at bay. So if it goes away, she might harbor some kind of hatred for her once again. I don't know though. But it's an interesting thing to think about nonetheless. High speed processing, again, her ability to 
think of co in, in combative situations, you know, which way to maneuver, uh, every kind of attack that might come her way, how to avoid them, and then with all these other things, like future sight, etc., she's able to basically we become one hell of a combative force of nature. Hit level 10, her ability to probably hit in a target and their ability to like evade attacks. So she's able to hit them probably a lot easier considering. Evasion, level 10, her ability to avoid set attacks. Again, pretty cut and dry. Fortune, level 10. This is probably more like a luck based skill that's since it's maxed out, you know, luck is on her side too. So even with everything piled against her, and then with like her high speed processing, her future sight, etc., she's able to predict everything. If something were to possibly go against her favor, luck, this fortune or luck level 10 would probably help her overcome the odds at least to some degree uh notably one of the things that even comes to mind is her encounter her with uh ariel when ariel blew her body apart she had literally just gained the immortality skill and had ariel saw her prior to that she'd be dead so you could uh chalk that up to this fortune stealth level 10 her ability to hide concealment level 2 goes in tandem with each other. Silence level 10. Again, uh, what's this? Odorless? Odorless level 3. Look, all these abilities go hand in hand with each other. Like, she's the perfect assassin. Um, she's shown off assassination abilities in these last few episodes. Namely, with the guy who she killed to start the war with. Killing him from really far away. But that has nothing to do with any of these abilities. But... She could use these abilities to hide in plain sight, basically, because she you can't hear her. She doesn't smell like anything. Uh, let's see if there's any more to go with this. Nope. So perfect uh, assassination or assassin type abilities here. Then we've got the emperor ability. All right, not able to find anything on this ability, so I'm pretty sure it just has something to do with her ability to lead or control others, uh, possibly make allies and friends or associates to help her to basically achieve her goals. Hence why she's able to get into the Demon Lord Ariel's army. Uh, this might have something to do with the fortune skill as well, but this uh, Emperor ability probably helps us. Moving on, Conviction. Again, can't find anything on this, so more or less probably her ability to do this, stay convicted to a certain task or goal. Like Sophia, her conviction to save and protect Sophia, her desire to stick in the town to make sure nothing happened to her. Because as she stated in a previous episode, if she just lets her die after saving her, then that would have been a waste of her time. So she can't have that. All right, then we move on to Hades. <laughs> All right, so this skill just manifests Hades. So I'm not sure if it manifests hell or uh, this version's or this world's version of Satan. Uh, pretty sure Hades being hell, so it probably manifests some kind of version of hell, uh, probably like Hellfire or some area that's surrounded by fire, lava, etc. Then we have Sloth. All right, so to go in tandem with Sloth, uh, you've got to kind of understand the MA ability. MA is this world's magical energy, which is basically what gives skills in the first place and keeps the world running alive and going forward in general. Um, the Sloth ability allows her to manipulate it to some degree. It also allows, hence Sloth, the ability to greatly reduce the consumption of other things like magic points, hit points, SP in her case, to drastically decrease. So uh, her ability to use height occultism basically to decrease her magic consumption. With this, it increases the magic consumption even further. So that, as I stated earlier, she needed 500 magic points to destroy like a squad of people. Now she probably need 100 because it further decreases her ability or need of those things. Again, this is just my assumption. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But this is kind of what I'm assuming anyway. Um, this ability also allows her to control the 
stats, I'm guessing, or abilities of things surrounding her. She's able to decrease them. So anything in like a, an area or a field of range that she wants it to go down in, other than herself, it'll go down. So take like Shun, for instance. He goes out there and tries to combat her. She's able to use her ability to decrease his stats while keeping her stats the same. Immortality. Um, so she's able to basically essentially stay alive unless it's a abyss magic attack or a heresy attack. So she's essentially immortal against most attacks unless they're abyss magic or heresy magic. Now, she's also able with Undying Body to negate death once per day with one hit point remaining. I'm not sure if this works against heresy or abyss magic. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what Ariel used initially when she attacked her and blew away her body other than just her head. But if she did, that would correlate with the ability she has. It makes sense. Heresy magic level 10. Her probably, again, her ability to use heresy magic. Like uh, one of the abilities we went over, over up here. Um, so a quick overview of the heresy magic. We'll go over that and if uh, their abilities come up again later, we'll either re-go over them or skip them. But a quick synopsis of the abilities is the attribute she gains is Ren Soul, Hypnotized Effect, Brainwashed Effect, Charmed Effect, Madness Effect, Discomfort Effect, Phantom Pain Effect, Fear Effect, Stupefication Effect. So she's probably able to basically use these effects against other people. She's able to like charm them or to fear them, to make them dumb or to make them less apt to make smart decisions during combat. And the skills she gains are Heretic Attack, uh, Hypnotizing Evil Eye, Lust, Charming Evil Eye, Maddening Evil Eye, Discomforting Evil Eye, Phantom Pain Evil Eye, Fearful Evil Eye, and Stupefication Evil Eye. So every attribute she gains has a skill effect that goes along with it. So. We will go over one of them. We will go over the stupefication evil eye, just because it sounds kind of absurd. Inflicts heresy attributes effect stupefication to anything in the user's field of vision. So anything she sees, she can stupefy, basically. Uh, it doesn't say what it actually does, so there's that. So basically, every one of these abilities, it says that anything within her field of vision, it affects, but it doesn't say the effect. But we can kind of generalize what it would be just off the name of the level. All right, Gale Magic Level One, probably some type of wind type magic or effect that she has. Right, then we've got Celestial Power. Again, probably just an ability to use Celestial type magic and Jealous type magic, Creation type abilities. Earth Magic Level Ten. Her ability probably to manipulate the earth, trees, mountains, surrounding landscapes, etc. Terrain magic probably goes in tandem with these two. Alright people, so I ran across a little bit of the Gale magic and apparently it allows her to also hold the target in place. So she can essentially imprison somebody within like I guess a sphere of wind or air. Alright, so shadow magic, she's able to make shadows darker make them larger so i guess she can make something appear more imposing so like let's say like a rabbit were to hop in the view she can enlarge its shadow to make it seem like a gigantic creature is coming she can create shadows in light change the shape of the shadow so she can make it essentially look like said rabbit is a huge spider solidify a shadow so she can give it mass or some kind of density probably she can move the shadow so she can take said rabbit spider shadow and move it up or down or anywhere she desires to cast it and shadow sync okay so she is able to essentially take a shadow and then let's say you walk over it she can pull you into the shadow kind of like a dark hole or a, a black hole essentially which seems pretty powerful in its own right 
So then after dark or shadow magic, we have dark magic level 10. She's able to fire a black ball or she's able to basically shoot out or expel a dark magic attack at an individual. Dark magic. Then we've got black magic level 10. All right, so black magic level 10 uh, allows her to fire a jet black ball which explodes with shock attribute upon collision. So she fires the ball and then when it hits something, it shocks them. And then it probably uses like the impact ability she has to make the collision of said ball hitting them even much more intense than typically would have been. Uh, she could probably take like a slingshot and turn it into a cannon with these kind of abilities. Uh, she has a spear version of the ball, which she could probably propel. And then she's able to create a blade that cuts. So she probably can create like a shadow type blade through the black magic that is able to cut through objects. Um, kind of like her arm, but an extension of it more or less. And then she's able to do a, an ability called Black World, which engulfs a 100 millimeter or a hundred meter diameter of into a pitch black darkness and it does significant amounts of damage and then we have dimensional magic level six All right so with this ability she's able to teleport things to her uh even against the target's will so like shun she could just like teleport him right in front of her and then she could just punch him or whatever flick him <laughs> what not I wonder how powerful a flick from her finger would be with all these abilities. Like she could just flick you and then make the impact even worse and just propel you across the room. All right, then we have another one of her more signature abilities, Abyss Magic level 10. So she has managed to get this ability also to its height. Abyss Magic level 10. The highest form of dark magic manipulates the darkness of the abyss or Name of turns probably like Hell or the Underworld. Killing with this magic produces no experience. That's something I didn't know. So she gains nothing if she kills anything. Unlike Heretic Magic, which destroys the soul, Abyss Magic decomposes the soul and contributes its energy to the system, preventing the target from ever reincarnating. All Abyss Magic spells have a slow invocation time because their purpose is to pass judgment. Huh, so its purpose is to pass judgment, so it has a slow incantation time. Since it doesn't allow for reincarnation, and it essentially judges the soul and sends the energy back into the system. Let's say the soul was judged worthy. Uh, would that essentially mean that the abyss magic backfires and they don't die? Or that they just take some damage or substantial damage, but it doesn't kill them, so that they're still able to reincarnate? Uh, she's able to use Hellgate. With this ability, which engulfs everything with an intense darkness and causes probably massive damage. It also sinks all the targets within it five meters down into the ground. So like with the dragon she killed, it surrounded him, it then sunk him down, did massive damage. Uh, and keep in mind that this attack, even though it did massive damage, it still wasn't what killed the dragon. So dragons are pretty resilient to this kind of damage, I would assume. Hell of Unbelievers, uh, I guess she sends hell, uh, Unbelievers into Hell. Uh, it also has Hell of Lust, Hell of Gluttony, Hell, greed, wrath, heresy, violence, fraud, and treachery. So like hell gate. So I'm not sure if these are different forms of hell that she's able to send people into or if they each have like their different abilities it doesn't say or go into detail. But I would assume that kind of like with the uh, assumption of the seven gates or seven circles of hell or something to that effect, it might have something to do with something like that. Okay, then we have Demon Lord level 8. Alright, so this ability, uh, I would assume, gives control over demons. Uh, 
but in this world it basically just increases stats stats are increased by a hundred times the level of the stat uh, it also raises all resistance and at level 8 I'm pretty sure it's not level 100 but probably 80 I would assume 10 levels per uh, level perseverance her ability to just probably pull through things and keep going she has this never give up kind of attitude lately in the series uh, especially when fighting certain monsters she's constantly pulling going forward basically saying you know I'm not about to give up I'm not, not about to die like this all right so we got pride all right and the pride ability is in percentage and in percentage is basically like a reincarnation percentage I think not sure exactly what this means all right so briefly the in percentage is something that all the reincarnations get when they come into the world it's what allows them to retain their memories also to carry forward with like their wisdom strength and other abilities they had as a human it's what gives them the ability to use the system and to gain abilities uh, without the in percent in percentage ability they would just be all normal humans it also gives them the ability to retain certain stats as they level up up to a certain point after they get so high in uh, percentage when we look at pride and percentage of the power to reach godhood so in percentage is the ability stat I guess they need to reach this point so in percentage of the power to reach godhood as a reincarnated being they have a certain percentage which is the end to reach godhood upon acquiring the pride ability basically experience points and proficiency will greatly increase along with the improved growth capability for every ability so essentially kumiko's ability to use like any ability is enhanced due to the pride ability in addition the user will gain the ability to surpass the w system or the ma field which i said earlier is the energy system within the world that allows everybody to gain powers which essentially is what allows life on this planet or world she's able to basically reach further past what the world sets in in place with the pride ability all right then she has rage level two but right, i'm not sure uh rage uh goes in tandem or is just another form of wrath um but i feel like it does going off of what i've been reading acquisition of wrath the title granted to one who has conquered wrath or rage while active the user goes into basically she becomes like a berserker and probably doesn't feel pain uh has incredibly increased strength but also probably takes way more damage but seeing how she's immortal that might not even matter uh so she's probably able to beat foes now that are incredibly strong compared to her might be why one of the reasons why she's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with ariel um or at least fend her off although i don't think i've ever seen her in an enraged moment against ariel just yet at least but we might get there eventually her sir level three so it basically says it deprives the target of some of their abilities or power upon how many people the user kills so let's say kumiko kills 20 people then she uses this ability to go against ariel she's able to strip some of her power away or her abilities away uh to some degree uh i'm not sure if this is kind of like what hugo had in a way uh, where he's a when uh, he killed people he essentially took all their abilities from them uh just like a different variation of it so then we have satiation level 10. all right satiation has uh, ties with the gluttony ability and uh, as a level two ability allows the user to ingest food beyond normal limitations hit point magic points and spell points or sp will recover accordingly in addition the excess can be stocked as surplus so um, basically like when she ate like things like 20 times her size uh, gluttony allowed her to do that and then to store all of the nutrients or energy that those things would have gave past what she was able to basically use for a later day in time um, which makes a lot of sense because um, 
This girl ate things like way bigger than she did. And I, I was kind of confused as to how that happened. So she's able to just basically store energy like a bear over during hibernation and use it when she needs it. Then we have cutting super resistance level five. Probably just her ability to resist being cut by objects or things. Piercing super resistance level five, same thing. Shock resistance level five. Flame resistance level eight. Blood resistance level one. Gale resistance level four. Black magic resistance level five. Heavy super resistance level four. Status condition notification. So more than likely, uh, as we said earlier, with the status enhancement ability she has where she could take like the sleep effect and turn it into a coma, she could probably reverse that. So she could turn the coma into a sleep or a sleep into a slightly groggy uh, effect so that she doesn't just succumb to the abilities that are being thrown at her, the elements with disabilities. Okay, then we have acid super resistance level seven, rot super resistance level five, faint resistance level eight. So basically those plethora of resistances that she has against certain elements, status effects, or whatnot. Every one of those is pretty basic and dry. So ultimate life level 10. Again, something not really gone into detail with, but I'm pretty sure just based off the name alone, it just means that she just probably lives for an extremely long time. Like she can give elves and dragons a run for their money. Night vision level 10, probably just her ability to look and see into the darkness. Uh, at max level, probably pretty easy. I'm pretty sure that there's no amount of darkness that she probably can't see through in some form or fashion. Panopic vision. All right, so this one's probably just her ability to basically see into wider ranges of view. Like, whereas the typical person can just see forward and just a little to the side if we're really watching, she can probably see into a wider range of view. Moving forward, we have Jinx Evil Eye, level 8. Alright, uh, it doesn't really go into detail about what that is, uh, anything that I can look up, so I'm pretty sure it just means her ability to make it to where like her target trips up more or you know bad things happen to them more often repellent evil eye level five mm, not sure about that one i didn't see that either ultimate movement level 10. okay same thing not a whole lot to go off of so i'm just assuming it means she's able to move freely uh in any given situation more easily than in others like um quicksand if she were in quicksand she could probably move through it like water or even air uh just able to escape it even quicker than most beings would be able to fortitude level 10 uh her ability to endure i'm pretty sure to take take attacks head on stronghold level 10. all right not able to find anything on stronghold level 10 either so um, actually kind of in the air on that one not really sure what that is so let me know what you all think it is and get back to me so I know what it is all right then we've got Skanda level 10 all right this is another one I'm not sure of uh, there's some folklore about it meaning speed so I'm not sure if that has something to do with it so moving on even further taboo level 10 all right, so taboo is basically a title given to the user for committing atrocious acts like the king eater where you know kumiko or Faroon ate their own relatives their own kin it'd be like cannibalism basically um certain evolutions like the ed sane state uh, apparently give taboo too so even if kumiko didn't eat any of her kin, she would have still have gotten it through the evolution. This is also how uh, Kumiko knows about the world's end, how it's coming, um, basically the reason why she wants to stop it, because of the taboo skill, she knows that it's coming, which makes me wonder why the church doesn't want people to have this skill. Like, is it because they don't want them to be aware of the end times that are about to happen? Maybe they're the ones pushing for it? Uh, my belief was that it's the elves, but it could possibly be them too, uh, which is why they're basically warring with each other, the elves and the Turks. 
but basically taboo is gained through doing something you're not supposed to and then it gives you information into things you're probably not supposed to have any information about in the first place so you kind of go hand in hand huh then we've got kumiko's titles that she has foul feeder can eater again assassin monster slayer poison technique user thread user dragon slayer fear bringer worm slayer ruler of sloth so the ruler of sloth title uh again it grants like the ability to consume things at a slower rate it also makes the holder as being who should do all right from the general summary i'm getting because the english translation on this thing is kind of poor uh basically what it says is the title of the sloth holder has like a list of priorities that they need to get done but are too lazy to basically do that so there's things they know they need to do but they just don't want to uh, then we have monster calamity all right everybody so that's the list of abilities she has her stats now from previous times um, this again is just for fun uh, this is by no means exhaustive and it also just goes up to the anime she has way more abilities um i've seen quite a few of them going through these just trying to get this little information out so let me know what you all thought of the video is it something you all enjoyed maybe we can continue to do this as the anime progresses and again if you have anything to add let me know and i'll see you all next time Da-da-da!